everyone, welcome to Screw the Stock Market, where we talk about investing outside of the traditional stock market, alternative investments, and it's all done with the goal of financial freedom and taking control of our finances and our futures and our lives and our, our everything, you know, it's, it's all about control. So today we're really excited because we have a, a guest named Curtis May, and he's going to talk to us about his philosophies about building wealth. And it's a really nice episode because he kind of sums up a lot of the topics that we've covered over the last few weeks and months, really. And it's just a really good summary. So it's kind of a cool thing because the previous episodes, we'd have a guest with a particular investment topic, where whether it's notes or buying businesses or real estate or whatever. And it was just a you know another one-off kind of thing. And they, they were all really exciting and good. But what Curtis talked about was more of a methodology or a, a process and principles. It's more of a, also more in terms of uh, processes of mindset, uh, kind of changing the way that you think about money and your perspective in terms of how you deal with it, how you um, develop the, the assets that you need, um, utilizing the funds that you have available, what you should prioritize first uh, in comparison to what you've been taught to prioritize first. Yeah, I mean, we definitely spent a good amount of time just hating on the stock market and the traditional kind of financial systems and stuff, which is fun always. But then towards the end of the episode, you know, so then he has a, a big chunk of time where we're talking about mindset and developing ourselves and all that, which is awesome. It's really powerful. I totally believe in it. And then at the end, it's kind of the tidbits that are maybe a little bit more actionable and just kind of things that you can actually start to try to implement in your lives. And so... With that, I think, you know, hopefully you get a lot from the show and thank you for listening. We're always eager to hear feedback and, uh, you know, get more involvement about what you want to hear about on the show. So please continue to reach out and let us know that you're listening and what you think. So with that, thanks, guys. Really appreciate everyone. And also be Go ahead. also be prepared to uh, take some notes on readings. Uh, he does list a lot of reading material that you can utilize that might be helpful. But yes, with that, let's get into it. All right, let's do it. All right, let's go. All right. Curtis, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to be talking to you uh, in a large, you know, in a in a really cool way. I think we're very much in the same space. Um, and, you know, I'm really excited to learn about how you talk to clients about, uh, you know, building wealth practically. And so, practically, yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, at the beginning of the show, we always give our, our guests a, a little bit of an opportunity to get personal and tell us a little bit about who they are and where they come from. And then later on, we'll jump into more of the, the content. Okay, sounds good. So um, my name is Curtis May. I'm, I'm born and raised in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, so not West Philly, like Fresh Print, North Philly. <laughs> and um, uh, I'm a, I would say a, a second generation, third generation uh, entrepreneur or business owner. I uh, grew up, my family owned a business in Philly. We owned a supermarket. Actually, we were in the store business uh, growing up. And, uh, and we had a kind of a mishap of fire and we ended up going into the tavern business. I actually, and I got into the business I am in, in college. Uh, I always tell people I realized the NBA was not looking 5'11 shooting guards <laughs> and uh, with a mediocre handle. And uh, I got my insurance license in college, uh, drove an hour and a half to Charlotte in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and uh, got my license. And then a couple years later, I got my uh, uh, securities license. So I was, you know, registered 663, 26, a, a principal uh, for till about 2000 from. So this is like 1985 um, up through 2000, 2000. So I was I was actually doing that for about 15 years. Um, then I had a little epiphany. I read a little book called Rich Dad Poor Dad, and I re realized what he, and um, what I was doing was different, right? And I, he had a little table called Rich Dad's Guide to Investing, and it was him and uh, who I eventually met, and his picture of mine, Kim Butler, uh, was on one of those tapes, and and so Kim said a few things about insurance. I was like, what is she talking about, right? And and then that. You know, my nerdy mind, I'm a, if you ever told me, I'm a seven fact find, right? So I'm going to figure some stuff out. And uh, so I just started digging and then I, you know, I found this little book called Becoming Your Own Banker. And 
then I, you know, I read that. And then that led me to start studying Austrian economics because I went through crashes and I had to, I couldn't, you know, why I lived through four crashes, like 87, um, what's one happened after that one? Like Y2K and then 9-11, right? And I, I, people say it just happens. It don't just happen. There's things that cause it. And I need, you know, as I start, there's a little great book that y'all should pick up. Really want to really understand economics. It's called Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. And like true economics, like free market economics, not this Keynesian central planning BS. Okay. And uh, so uh, I got into that. And then I started to, you know, read Creature from Jekyll Island. You start figuring out what is going on. Because, you know, there's a saying, if you know what's going on, you'll know what to do. Right. And most people don't know what's going on. And so they're they're always they're tactical, just chasing returns and stuff like that. And uh, I wanted to know how stuff worked. And then what we try to do is work with clients. I really consider myself as a financial educator. Right. So I tell you what you know today or what you learn today will determine where you'll be at five, ten years from now if you start taking different actions. And uh, so that's it, you know, so I've been doing this really since 85. I've been um, uh, doing what I'm doing now in teaching what I call principle based planning, um, uh, probably or since 2012. And then I've just gotten really good at it in the last five years. <laughs> so and um, like really where I'm dialed in and I know everything works and it's, it, it, it works because all my clients I have is this, but now I'm dialed in. Now I coach people. Now I'm going to make you win because you're going to do what I say and I'm going to follow up with you. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's the madness that is Curtis. Short, right, well, long story short. No, we're really excited to have you. You know, like I feel like for us, Aviv and I, we are, you know, the, the, the impetus of the show was kind of, hey, um, the first time I, I started raising money for this apartment building and I remember talking to a friend and they said, ah, you know, I'd love to invest with you, but I can't. I'm too busy investing for my retirement. And it hit me that for her investment, investment meant the stock market. It meant 401k. It meant delaying your life and meant kind of the traditional model. And that's where kind of the screw the stock market kind of thing came from. But really, the show is really an exploration of what's out there as we're trying to figure it out ourselves. And so we're really excited to talk to you because it seems like you you figured it out. Obviously, um, you know, you, you've been doing this for a while. And so we definitely want to capture as many lessons as we can from our conversation today. But, um, you know, first, I guess, would you mind maybe spending a little bit of time talking about if the show is called Screw the Stock Market, could you tell us a little bit about the traditional path and why it doesn't work? Why I don't like work. it? Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't work. Okay, so here's a, a so think about uh, there's two thought when it comes to money, right? There's what I call the accumulation theory, which is what 98 percent of typical financial advice is built on. So it's built on buy and hold. Dollar coverage, get out of debt, you know, all around the S and P and index funds and and your uh, uh, the revenue to all of that, you know, buy term investor difference, all of that that you know average rates of return, all of that language. So when you're hearing that, you know, building a nest egg, getting this big pile of money and being able to live off of it until you hopefully you don't run out of money before you die. That's out, right and so but there but if you look at what institutions do and what rich people do they don't do none of that crap they live i was on the phone with this the, the, the person with one of my insurance companies that manages their 35 dollar b with a b money on right there how he runs their money they don't do any of that stuff they don't buy and hold he didn't talk about the magic of compound interest none of that stuff okay and so now it's like all right what they so it's cool Cool, because he validated. I've been saying this for like six years, and then I just listened to on the insider. I've just realized you. I mean, you read it, so you see it if you start looking at the right stuff. But he validated completely. So now I'm like on now, and uh, uh, but so and here's what they talk about. So they talk about step one: velocity of money, right? So it's a it's an economic principle of how many times you can turn money over. So they don't care about 
buying and holding an imaginative component, right? So velocity is, so if you ever feel, guys, as your listeners, as you hear this, think of, you've heard this language. So if you're in real estate, that's the Burr method, mm-hmm. right? That's getting it, putting in a deal, RV, cashing out, getting your money back out, moving it into another deal. That's all about velocity. Or if you hear, I, I spoke uh, at the Laundromat Millionaire Conference in Florida in, in March of 2022, and go they talk about, yeah, it was really cool. And that's to talk about a great business. You should, you should get him on your show. Talk about screw the stock market. Y'all need to get Laundromat. Dave Men's Laundromat Millionaire. And so the um, uh, they talk about turns, like you know, get you know, getting efficient machines so they could get more people in and out efficiently where they don't need to have four dryers tied up, they have big ones, one big load here and get them in and out or, or self. It's just, it's a whole thing, right? Uh, but every business head, if you look at Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, well, if I give you my money, this half million dollars is a million dollars. What's the first thing he wants to know? How soon am I getting my money back? Right? That's velocity, right? And then now, does he still have equity? Yes. Is he still getting cash flow from that deal? Yes. But now if you get your money back out, you have no real deal. You have all your money back so you can do what? Put it into another deal. That's velocity. That's how they invest, but they teach you to leave it in this thing for 40 years. With a fluctuating market, with a dollar that buys less and less, so the longer you hold these monetary units called dollars, the less they'll buy. And, oh, by the way, for taxes, especially if you tied up in qualified plans. So it's really hard to win that game. you got so many moving parts, so many things working against you. It's really hard to win that game. But who wins this? Wall Street. Because like, if you look at Wall Street, every financial product, every financial product, there's no success in a product, right? I don't care who sells what. There's, there's all crap, right? And so... They want fourth. Well, think about this. If you're a financial institution and you want me, the first thing you want me to do is you want me to put money in your institution, mm-hmm. right? And how long, do you, how often? Every pay, if possible, right? How long do you want me to leave it there as long as you can? Long as, for, you know, and then how, how soon do you want me to take it out? Never. So every built with those, that's how they make money. I mean, I'm not un, in, uh, uh, indicting them. That's just how it is. So if you do, uh, and so they've been brainwashed with 40 years of marketing, this is what you're supposed to do. I got to put it in my retirement plan. That means I'm going to give up use of my money for 40 years. Let me charge them fees for 40 years and probably pay higher taxes with depreciating dollars, right? So that whole deck is stacked against you, right? And so... You know, they want to, and, and you want to get your money back because you should be focusing on cash flow because you can't eat equity. Okay. And so, but their goal is not to give you your money, and your goal is to become financially independent, meaning you can live off your money, but their goal is not to give it back to you. How's that work? Okay. Their goal is assets under management. You want cash flow. So it's completely opposite, but people are, are brainwashed. Is that the stronger word? They're uh, indoctrinated <laughs> to a certain thing of money. And then what you, you got to do is you kind of kind of break that. You got to, um, because here's the thing, I guys, I think that what people don't get one is the, um, I'm going to take, take a breath and ask me another question. Yeah. The, uh, so I don't take over the show. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, there's three rules of investing, right? That we, that we teach. Because investing is not about buying something. It's about becoming something. So you have to become a syndicator. You have to become a real estate investor. You have to become a good business owner. See, so the formula is B, right, right? But you have to learn how to do that. You got how to buy them, how to do this, how does this work? How do you get machines? How do you, you know, it's, you have to get a amount of expertise and see most people are trained. They want an easy button. They don't want to think. So what Wall Street sells is easy. Oh, you don't have the time, the temperament, or the training to personally manage your own money. Just give your money to us. See, they're marketing when you sum it up in, in, in so many words. Like, right? you're too dumb to manage money. Give it to us. That's basically what it is. That's how I hear it. Okay? And I don't think that's true. I think two plus four, right? And so the three rules of investing that we teach is invest in your number one asset, which is you, your mindset, your skill set, and your network, Right? 
and invest in what you control the outcome of, which you can influence the outcome of, and don't chase returns, right? Most people out there chase returns and they're just trying to hit the home run or they're, you know, oh, let's go with Bitcoin. Oh, what do you think about Bitcoin? What do you think about Bitcoin? You're about going to put your money in there. I don't know. You spell, is your, if you want to do it, don't buy it because for fear of missing out. You need to figure out how the hell it works before you put your money somewhere. And see, nobody wants to hear that because that's work. So don't get me. All right. So let me we calm lost, down. We lost a little money on, on some Bitcoin from fear of missing out. I'll for fear of missing out. Right? I won't. If I don't understand it, I don't do it. Because <laughs> here's the thing. So y'all always ask people, look, have you heard of Benjamin Graham? And they'll go, yeah. Right? Not Benjamin Graham. Warren Buffett. I'm sorry, I got I messed up my little thing. And um, or in Charlie Munger, right? So now, and most people go, yes. I said, well, have you heard of Benjamin Graham? Have you heard of Benjamin Graham? I haven't. Right? So he is a he is the their he's their disciples of Benjamin Graham. It's called Graham Value Investing. And he's got a he's got a couple of books, Security Analysis and Um The Intelligent Investor, right? So in that book, so, so when people say, I want to invest, let me tell you what I think investment is. And you tell me if we're talking about the same thing. All right. So an invest, this is, this is um, Benjamin Graham, is an uh, investment operation is one in which gives you a guarantee of principle and a reasonable opportunity to make a profit. If it doesn't fit that definition, you are speculating. Now think about that and think about what most people do with most of their money. Are we investing or are we spending? Nowadays, it's mostly speculation. Mostly speculation. And I'm not saying you shouldn't speculate, but I don't think it should be with like 90% of your money. <laughs> you know, I had, uh, uh, and you could speculate with money you can lose. I mean, how am I going to go to, you know, we were, we lived, you got that big casino down in North Virginia, but, uh, you know, we got Lank City, we've got the, uh, you know, the, uh, in Philly, now they have the casino. I'd rather really go to the casino. I get, you know, comp drinks, a, 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 a meal, and maybe a show if I'm going to blow a lot of money. <laughs> at least it's fun. Yeah. Right, at least it's fun. And because uh, losing money is not my ideal fun. Okay, so I, if I don't know about it, I don't win in doubt, don't. If I don't know, if I'm not willing to learn about it, that's, I don't do that. I don't do it. Now, that's, that's interesting. So, you know, I, I, I really appreciate you sharing all these titles too, you know, with these books because. That's one of the things I'm looking to do more of and just kind of really. So I started with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, turned my world upside down. Now yep. here we are. But that's just the beginning. It's like the gateway. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. the beginning because it's not very tactical. Right. And so you kind of got to like if you want like a more tactical in between book, then you get Lane Meyer's book, The Millionaire Maker. Right. Because she's she used to start running cash flow clubs for them when the book first came out. And so she's got her, her whole thing. But she gives you like, all right, here's step one, here's step two, here's stuff that you can do to 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 get into velocity. That's kind of what I do is I kind of teach it. Here's step, you know. So I take the rich dad stuff. We put it into here is one, two, three. Here are things that you can do to get to that point. And um, but it started with me. I needed to understand there was a different way to do this, and I need to look at this different. And that that's what most everybody I talk to on the show, on my show, they they somewhere in their their you know their story. This little purple book comes out, you know, in there that started him down, down the path. So it's very, it's very cool. And it, and it's it's good that you kind of mentioned the the aspect of investing in yourself in terms of improving your knowledge and secondly improving your network. Um, I think that both Alex and I, once we started on this journey, I mean, we started off by again with the gateway drug, which is rich dad, poor yeah. dad, and then from there you start reading all the other subject matters that are out there. Then from there you sign up for courses and things like that, which, you know, a lot of times you think like a lot of these trainings and courses are, you know, not really worth it, but they really are. I mean, you get exposure to a lot of experienced people that have already done this stuff and networking is the key thing that you get out of it. Um, I'll give you an example. There was a course that uh, Alex and I both signed up for and through that course, Alex was able to meet one of his main investing partners, and they've already done two large apartment complex deals together just because of that meeting in that network group through that course. Um, so that is created you revenue. You have to that pay to be in the right room. You know what I mean? You gotta right. can't go to like free events. You gotta get in the room because p other people have paid a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand to be in this meeting. So now you're already in rare air. Just getting around that. So if you're, he's there and you're there, 
all right, well, uh, you they they know you you know you had to put up some money to be in here, <laughs> so yeah. you're serious. I mean, you can still do it. you can still do it at free events too, um, but with these other specialized groups, you know that these are people that are really really serious right. about this. You can and start with the free time. events. I mean, I, you still go to free events, but I you know yeah. you want to make some money, save some money, and be, and you gotta kind of love you know and and you want to move from that. But right yeah. now it's just getting out because business is a contact sport. You got to start where you can start, and there are little ones ones your meetups and you know because really it's mindset which so let's break that down for a second what you watch think about listen to and read mindset skill set because if you read rich another book so i have no original thoughts just so y'all know i don't <laughs> I have no original thoughts okay and um uh, but skill set see what you learn is the skills a skill set negotiation that's a skill set skill Skills make money, right? Rich Dad, Rich Thick Girl Rich, I'm sorry, is about organized planning, definite of purpose, specialized knowledge, and see follows value, right? So if you want to make money, money is a result of creating value in the marketplace, of, of solving problems. So if you want to make more money, you got to think, well, who can I, what problem do I have? And the bigger the problem, the bigger the check. So now you can trade your expertise, your knowledge for money. You save that, that money and you use that money to buy or build cash flowing assets, right? But so you got to have something that you that, that you can do and your network break it down to two parts. Who do you know? But more importantly, so this is the power of a podcast and, and, and speaking and that kind of stuff. Who knows you? So you're showing up better. You're showing up um, you know, you're showing up different, not just like one of the crowd. You're showing up, dare I say, as as the man. <laughs> so that's, that's a Philly thing. Yeah. And, I, and I would, and I, I would say that the, your resource, re, I mean, your network is big. Your biggest resource by far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, those are your mentors. Those are your peers. Those are your investor groups. Those are your everything. Um, so the better network you have, and the more you invest in developing that network. Um, the better your chances of achieving wealth. I mean, uh, what is the saying? You know, you are who you're you're surrounded right. by. Um, your network. So your you net worth. Yeah, and see, the other thing to that is, what can I give? Right? What can, can I be of service? So if I meet somebody, it's like, what are you working on? What? How can I support you? Right? It's not about me, 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 me. That gets old. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a great book, Bob Burr's book, being a go giver, like that, that whole mentality. Is um uh because sometimes you don't have money. Let's say you, you people say, oh, can you mentor me? Well, maybe. What 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 can you? Do? I won't say what can you do for me, but you know, if you want that, you need to come at it. Well, what can you do? I can, I'll sell tickets to your next meeting. I'll, I'll sweep the floor. Whatever. How can you create value? I will go out and I will run down these names for you. That kind of stuff. You gotta, you know, you gotta be in a position to create. If you don't have any money, there's other things that you could do that'd be helpful to. The person that you want to mentor you and I, I think that people you know sometimes this goes back to short-term thinking and entitlement thinking you got to be willing to to, to give yeah, of yourself that's a really important point because it's actually challenging too right that's a big project that we can all take on because it doesn't matter what level you're at there's always someone who's 10 steps ahead of you who you'd love to be friends with who you'd love to be able to to take on as a mentor and it's always that person doesn't need you usually, right? They're already doing things that are at a much higher level. And so the more right. creative we can be about our skill set and, and our mindset on how we can add value to those people, that's when we really start to bring in some heavy hitters. Like we want to meet, we want to pitch our thing, right? And they don't care about your thing. They get deals come at them every day. So exactly. it's like, hey, you know, we're, we're great to meet you. I, you know, I'm a fan of your stuff. Uh, what are you working on that you're excited about? And how, 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 any way I can support you in that. I like that. That's really cool. That's a very direct, simple uh, question to at least have a conversation at the least. And then you, you have a conversation because they want to talk about themselves, oh, yeah. right? So talk about their projects. So you get them talk, talking about your. It's like right out of like little stuff like the How Win Friends Influence People. I have my kids read that, you know, and I tell them God gave you two ears, two eyes, and one mouth because he wants you to look and listen. Uh, twice as much as you talk and see so you're saying well when he's going to get to the investment stuff listen what did i tell you makes money skills make money you know investing is negotiation it's people skills it's getting to know people it's sales it's follow-up it's building a 
you know, if you're wholesaling yourself, uh, building a buyer's base, it's all marketing. And see, so those are the, you can't sit behind a computer screen and get your VA to, you know, you can do some of that stuff, but eventually you got to pick up the phone <laughs> and talk to some people, build a network. So anyway, that's, that's, that's my little two cents there, you know, my, okay. but it's about, because that's part of the becoming. Those are things that you have to work on. I think that a lot of times people give that short shrift. And I think that's really important. Yeah, definitely uh, resonate with that. So, so, and, and I think, I can't remember if it was before the caller or, or after we hit record that you mentioned the be, do, have. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, it's because I was listening to your show. Oh. In, in preparation, actually. It, it, was, it felt like it was just earlier. Uh, but it's exactly that, right? Yeah. It's, it's becoming yeah. that person who has deals coming to them, who has opportunity coming to them. Uh, so, so now you, you mentioned earlier too the the four different types of of assets that you do recommend. Can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about those and how you differentiate and how someone might pick a path for themselves? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, particularly someone with no previous investment experience beyond besides you know the standard you know four hundred one k standard retirement. Investment. Okay. So let me. I'm gonna take one step back, okay, right? Sure. Because investing so if there's five things about money principles investing is number five okay so that's not where you need to start at most of y'all don't need to be investing in anything hear me okay so principles drive strategy strategy drives tactics okay so let me go to principles first so i teach five principles of personal finance so the go come and remain financially free all right. So you have to begin with the end in mind. Where are you investing for? What is the outcome? What do you want? Right. So if you want to be, be financially free, we define as passive income twice your expenses. We call it getting to a position of excuse the spread of you. OK, so and and, uh, and so so that means see, so if you want to that that's a function of close. See, uh, that already narrows the field. Right. Because you can invest for cash flow. No. Or you can be a cattle rancher and rich dad's terminology and slaughter the cow. That means buy it, let it run up, sell it. House, and you just got to go back and you got to do it all over again because your only way to get money out of the asset is to sell it or to liquidate it. Okay. So you've got to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Okay. So first you got to start with what do you want and why. Then, so there are the principles that lead up to principle five, which is what you're talking about. Principle one, we'll go through real fast. Uh, is save. Real wealth is part of all you earn is yours to keep. So you got to work, earn, and save. Okay? Liquidity, right? And so I want you, how much, Curtis? I want you saving 15 to 20% of your gross, in gross income. You make 100 grand a year, I want you saving $15,000 a year, and the 401k doesn't count because that's not saving. Okay? So let me define it. Safe, liquid, accessible guaranteed okay so now i'm going to tell you where that is right now you have to call me but the uh, i'm going to tell you the and, and savings need to be automatic systematic i will tell you but the uh, uh so you got to save right so that's step one now you got to play defense right you have to protect what you're doing so the second phase is protection right because see while you're building your empire you get disabled you could get sued you could die you could uh uh you could be, you could have an auto accident where you're at fault, but you don't have enough insurance. You don't have, have umbrella coverage. You don't have a will. You don't have any uh, entities, that asset protection. So the second step is you got to play defense. People say, what do you do? I'm your defensive coordinator. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to make sure you don't lose money. Right. I'm your defensive coordinator. And then three is you got to leave legacy. So, you know, you want to leave a legacy of wealth and wisdom. So that's protection, that's insurance. You want to make sure that you are, you know, passing on your empire intact, tax-free, as much tax-free as possible. Principle four is liquidity. Okay. That's where the, so how do you get principle four? You got to start principle, got to say, and the goal for that is six to 12 months of your income in, a, in liquid positions. OK, and so if you have 90 days of your income in cash, don't even talk to me about investing because you don't have any money yet. You definitely don't have any money you can't afford to lose. OK, so you got to slow down to speed up because, you know, if you've got six months, 12 months, OK, you can speculate a little bit as long as you don't go into that. Right. 
And so, so 90 days is your emergency fund. Everything above that, if you're in business, maybe six months, everything above that is now your opportunity fund. And now you have capital to buy or build assets. See, if you have money, you don't have to go looking for stuff. Stuff will find you. Opportunity if you have capital, okay? And because uh, the world is full of people, ideas, and money. So they know, and you don't even have to really they know you have money or not, right? And they'll come at you with syndication deals and stuff you do, if you know. And uh, because if you want to get into good stuff, you know, a lot of times you have to be a credit investor, but you need thirty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to get into some of the stuff you're talking about. Well, you can't do that if you don't have any savings, mm -hmm. you know, that you can afford to touch for a year or three years, right? And then the fifth, now we're talking is velocity. So again, it's velocity over accumulation. And now we get to, and here's the thing: this is not my job. Okay, to figure this out. So what I, I break it down into asset classes. So if you look at the, one of the things I'll ask people, so like out of the Forbes 400, I'll ask them, well, how many of those people you think inherited their money? Right? Most people say like 50%, 60% on my little Marxist run around out there, my little Marxist college. Oh, 50%, 60%. And uh, <laughs> I like picking with people. And uh so, because none of them should be on this listening this this podcast, all right? So, <laughs> the uh, or you will, holler, or I'm gonna give you some homework. Call me, because then don't call me, but email me. And I'll give you a list to kind of cure you. And um, but what happens is there. So now, once you decide that, okay, because when you look at them, it's like eight percent that actually most of most of like the people on the on the Forbes list are first generation. So how do they get there? They worked, earned, they saved, they built businesses. They buy with their profits, real estate. They do paper. So like now let's talk just paper because people paper think people think stocks, bonds, mutual funds. The paper's broader than that. Papers. I got clients that do private lending. Okay, to other they have enough capital. They just they don't want to be bothered with doing the real estate, so they they just loan it out to people, charge them 10, 12, 15 percent. Okay. Paper, we teach a strategy called infinite banking. That's kind of uh, where we use properly structured dividend, dividend paying life insurance. That's where we store the money in step 50 is where you can collateralize your cash value. And then our clients do that. And then they buy businesses. They buy or down payments on businesses, on real estate, on business equipment. And then they, we, we borrow the business model of the banks and try to you know, keep that money circulating in their personal or business economy. Uh, I've got clients that buy notes, so you can go to bank. You can buy mortgage notes, um, uh, or directly where they they originate they loan money to to real estate investors, and they keep the notes, and then they they originate forty fifty notes uh, loans a month, and then they sell the notes to their investors. So you can buy a fifty thousand dollar, hundred thousand dollar, hundred and fifty thousand dollar first lien note. And you're not getting that discount. But you are buying cash flow where you don't have toilets, tenants, or termites, right? You just, you're the bank. So I don't want to hear anything. I have a lot of equity. And if you mess up, guess what? The house is mine because I'm a foreclosed. I'm the D. I'm the bank. So you can so buy real, those. So real quick, you can just approach a bank, any bank. No, and just no, say, it's a whole process, which is how to do okay. it. I mean, I've interviewed people that do it. I mean, there's, there's funds you could do it like a syndicator. And then I've right. interviewed people. Uh, 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 a guy, he's got a, his name is Chris. He's got a book out called Profit Like a Bank. And, you know, you've got to go to ask. It's a whole, like, he was trying to do real estate. There's a whole little subculture, right? And, and so he kind of fell into that. And he's going, oh, I'm going to Texas to his note conference. And you got to get with the asset managers at certain points of the year. You can buy performing and non performing loans. And, um, uh, you know, you can, it's a whole, that's what I mean. It's a little sub-marker. There's things like life settlements uh, where you can basically buy insurance policies of, of people that are like 89, 90 years old and they sell them uh, and you can invest in them. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff out there that you can do. And, there, and that industry is older than the mutual fund industry. It's just not new. It's just, there is, you know, it's, it's not, like, you just got to do some homework and, and um, learn how to do do due diligence of it you know you don't kiss the you don't marry the first girl you kiss you gotta learn how to do some due diligence and um but again it's about becoming it's not about like i don't give investment advice like here's some things you could do 
but you got to do your research. And fundamentally, one of the things you're saying is that you got to have that liquid capital up front, though. Um, so you need to set that aside prior to investing in your like retirement accounts, for example, is what you're recommending. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So because what happens is if you, it's, most people are out of balance. So they might have 50 grand in their, in their uh, uh, 401k and they might have 5,000, you know, and you look at them, they've got credit card debt, they're, they're getting tax tax refunds. So when I look at those people that have jobs, they have um they are told you have to opt out of putting money on your qualified plan. And so you have all this money in an entity you can't touch. Maybe you can take a four hundred one k loan. Maybe you can't. You, you're trying to max this out. So now you got two car loans. You you got debts. You've got student loans, and uh, and you have no money in savings because you think oh, I got I got to put this money to work. But you need liquidity, right? Because if you don't have any money, first time you have a hiccup. You have to go into more debt. So it's, it's out of balance. So I'll, I'll have a little model where I'll show them and I'll say, look, you know, here is your, here is your, your money and in investments. And then here is your savings. It's like a, uh, I have to show you another day, but I can't, it's, it's, but I gave them a way to visualize their entire personal economy. And I'll say, look, what looks out of balance to you? Oh, I don't think I have enough savings. Yeah. You think? Right. Well, you know, and so it's because people, if you, if they're, if they know that you will know what to do. So I try to put it out there and, and you know, we have a software that put it out, puts it out there visually for them. And what do you, do you think needs to get shore up, shored up here? And it's, oh yeah, I got it. I got it. Cause they, and they want to say, oh, I got to get out of debt. Getting out of debt is not even the top three things I could care about. Wow. Interesting. Okay, because getting out of debt, I was at this conference um, in Philly uh, last week, and the guy was like, yeah, I got this thing, pay mortgage off in seven years, and da 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 I was like, how would I want to do that? He was flabbergasted. Like, what, what do you mean? Don't you, you're going to pay $200,000 in interest? Uh, does saving money in interest make me money? What's the rate of return on equity? If I send X amount of my mortgage payment, does my payment go down? Does the value of the house go up? Okay. Do I, if, some, if I'm disabled, can I access that? Can the value of the house go down? See, all that is very, very risky. So paying extra money on your mortgage and 15-year mortgages and, and um, uh, um, doing by all that's a complete waste of money environment where money, they're printing money. So why would would you take think about this because of inflation this one you got to understand principles there are ways way stuff you got to understand before you start investing if you if you is your money worth more today your dollar your, your purchasing power or in the future today today so don't you think banks know that right why do you think they give you a lower rate on a 15-year mortgage because it creates velocity for them and they when you send their money, they just flow it back out and loan it back out to somebody else, creating velocity and additional cash flow. So, hey, uh, I want you to have your mortgage paid off, but if you have $100,000 cash and you have $100,000 of debt, you're not in debt. You have a liability, and that's a balance sheet neutral decision. That's how corporations look at it. They're not trying to get out of debt. So, you know what I mean? You got to think about uh, when you want to really begin invest, you got to look at money differently. I was just talking to somebody before we jumped on that was a business owner. I said, listen, you got to leave. They just left their jobs. I said, listen, so you got to leave all that. Because uh, this stuff is good for a certain group of people. But you got to leave that Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey stuff alone. Right? Because you're, it's, that advice is literally toxic for entrepreneurs. Because all of this financial advice is giving up, up control and giving your money. To, you're not even really investing you're speculating whereas you need to invest in your expertise your business and look as i told this guy so look it's unreasonable for you to over the next night did you 1x or 2x your business in the next 90 days yeah you think you can make your money make more money than vanguard yeah well, let's work on that <laughs> you know and so i just ask questions i don't tell people what to do they they kind of the people i work with their goal is work optional income you know 
in a decade or less. So it's like they want control. So the people that work with Curtis want con liquid use of control of their capital. And they already have an idea of what they do. If they don't, then, you know, we kind of, okay, here are the things that are out there through the show and through like little masterminds I do if you're part of our group and, uh, where you get to meet people and you kind of got to figure out, okay, what do you like? So you're going back to how do you choose them? You have to figure out what you like, what your shoe, what, what asset class you like. So my favorite asset class, not, I like real estate, but I don't love it, right? But I understand it. I interviewed this guy on his cousin Carl Allen, right? Who's like how to buy businesses, and I was listening. Oh, that's my. I was yeah. like that. I was totally fired. All the people that are talking about buying businesses and purchases and acquisition, I love that stuff, right? And because uh, I'm my father's son, he was a business owner, right? So he would go. I didn't last. Like this is not being a good idea. But I was like, damn, we should we, get, we need to get some real estate. He goes, what am I going to do with eight hundred dollars a month? Because <laughs> he could buy the he would buy the real estate. Day, right at the business who we were in a bar business so he could buy a bar he was a good operator so he could have the real estate and generate five grand a week hundred dollars a month so that was his thought process now in philly the whole market changed up and we should have been really what you do is do both so i'm trying to make sure that i do that like i know the mistake there so we because you know we had retail when retail went down that's all we had whereas if we had a diversified Portfolio a little bit, we would have been able to withstand, you know, some of the economic storms of that industry, right? So you really, you know, one Dan Kennedy says one is the worst word in business. So you, you know, you kind of need to, to, um, I call it have a West Coast offense with your money, right? Spread the, <laughs> spread the ball around, um, and not, you know, not three yards in a crowded, you know, in a, in a pile of dust. I do want to take shots downfield, but I will, you know, hand it off, get four yards here, five yards four yard carries that's first down boom you know and so you advance the ball forward and so a lot of everybody wants to go for the bomb or hit a home run but you know you can get a home run with four singles right so i know i've been sports analogies up but you know, i'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> I thinking, no. you totally do look like a football coach right now just with that right see everything is... right, right right so what's that you know but yeah, but we do, we do, we do get your general gist. I mean, at the end of the day, you need to know how to make your money work better for you, instead of following the standard model and standard approach. Um, the mortgage example was very good. I mean, if if you put all your money up front into paying off your mortgage early, that's a lot of lost opportunity over those. You know, let's say you had originally you could have done a thirty day year mortgage. That's more money in your pocket that you could have used to create like a million dollar business instead of dumping it all up front into a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that is important and that is critical into wealth building. And uh, I think that is one of the most important takeaways from this conversation is you really have to become more efficient with your, with your finances and the way that you think about your finances in the long run. That's it. It's like you got to think about it. You've got to educate yourself and, and stop looking for quick fixes. You got to find out what you like, what are you willing to develop some expertise in? And that doesn't happen overnight. And, uh, but investing is not risky. Being uneducated is risky. So, you know, as your knowledge goes, the risk comes down. That's where investing in yourself is the most yes, important that's thing. That's where you start. Just, you don't cost a lot of money to invest into your two years. And that's really where you want to start. And a lot of times people don't want to hear that because they want to know what to do. Tell me what to do. Right. So, so that's why I say it's be, then do, then have. But everybody wants to skip. skip be. Definitely. Definitely. So and my sister calls me the party pooper. So I hate to tell you. Coming. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, thank you for this conversation, Curtis. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you coming on to the show. This has been informative and a good learning opportunity for everyone. And, uh, yeah, we hope to uh, have you back sometime soon and hear more. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. So if you want more of the madness that is Curtis, check out the Practical Well Show <laughs> and uh, where we, we talk about that, that, that stuff. I actually have a gift for your listeners if I – if you yep, – uh, so I have a report called Creating Wealth Using the Velocity of Money. So it's all about velocity. And so we'll check either that one or, or the value of liquidity. I forget which one is which, but I'll, either one you'll get a good report. And if you want the other one, just email me. The uh, but the you just, if you text um, be the bank all one word be the bank to five five four four four.
and then we'll get that report out to you. Oh, very cool. Perfect. Thank yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Curtis, thank you. It was really great to meet you and look forward to crossing paths again, maybe at the Millionaire Laundry Mat owner uh, conference next year. Yeah, listen, um, that, that place was off the hook. You got to come. <laughs> so, And I think... <laughs> I don't think we've ever had an episode with as many book references too. So we're going to go through it again and try to list all the books because I think there's a lot of um, wisdom there. Some of those books I've seen, some of them I've read, but definitely not all of them. So really very well read. And thank you so much for sharing that. That's really helpful. Yeah. If I, uh, if I can think about it or if they, I'm going to put it, you know, so if you email Kurt may at gmail.com and say, can you see me list? Uh, I have, them in a in a in a uh, what's it called a uh, thing a drive file so I could reply and attach and send out. I'm happy to yeah, share. That'd be great. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Curtis. Really great to meet you. Take care. My pleasure. Thanks, guys, for having me.